this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Mr. Polyev, seconded by Mr. Schmel, moves that the House declare non-confidence in the Prime Minister and his costly government for increasing the carbon tax 23% on April 1st as part of his plan to quadruple the tax while Canadians cannot afford to eat, heat and house themselves and call for the House to be dissolved so Canadians can vote in a carbon tax election. After eight years, it is clear that this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, the crime or the corruption. But never would we have imagined how bad would things get. Today, I look at the newspaper headlines. Even the media is noticing how bad things are. A headline in the National Post, and I quote, Secret RCMP report warns Canadians may revolt once they realize how broke they are. The RCMP has produced a report saying that Canadians are so poor, desperate and miserable that it may lead to political instability and other in, uh, turbulence that you could not even have imagined would occur in a first world country eight years ago. I, I now turn my attention to the Globe and Mail. Remember, this is the same Globe and Mail that criticized me for using the term gatekeeper to describe how homes could not get built. Well, here's their headline today. Home ownership is turning into a gated community that renters can't join. So years after uh, saying that it was very dangerous for us to talk about gatekeepers, the Globe and Mail has now awakened to the fact that the Prime Minister in eight years has turned home ownership into a gated community, shutting people outside of the gates. A small privileged group gets richer and richer as the, the a, a growing mass of working class youth and seniors renting apartments can no longer afford any place to live. I used to warn that there were 35-year-olds uh, living in their parents' basements. Now that's the least of our concerns. Now we're worried that those 35-year-olds and their parents might not be able to make their mortgage payments at all. Defaults are rising rapidly. We have 35 homeless encampments in Halifax and, ha and similar encampments now in every major centre in Canada. We have 2 million people lined up at food banks in scenes that are reminiscent of the Great Depression. 35% of charities now say they're turning away people because they no longer have the resources and food bank shelves are emptying out. Then you have people who are eating out of garbage cans. 8,000 people now having joined something called the Dumpster Divers Network, a Facebook group where they share tips on how you can climb into a garbage can and pull a meal out because there's nothing you can afford at the grocery store and nothing left at the food bank. This year, groceries are going to cost $700 more than they did last year for the average family. And in the middle of all of this, what does the NDP and this Prime Minister choose? To raise taxes. Raise taxes on food and fuel, on heat and homes. Raise taxes on all the materials that go into building a home, which will raise taxes on all who buy the home. Raise taxes on heating that home. Raise taxes on the, the gas and diesel needed to get to work to earn a paycheck to make payments on that home and raise taxes on the farmers who make the food, the truckers who ship the food, the grocers who sell the food, and therefore all who buy the food, as if the desperation were not bad enough. And this in light of all the evidence that has come out that now 60% of Canadians are paying more in carbon tax than they get back in rebates. A fact that I have read into this record time and time again, a fact that the Prime Minister uh, c c continues to, to, to attempt to hide from, a fact that the Parliamentary Budget Officer just testified to, and a fact that we did not need all of those accurate calculations to know right. because every single person who's opening their empty fridge to wonder how they're going to feed their kids already knew that fact was real. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we cannot in good conscience Stand by while this Prime Minister imposes more misery on, and suffering on the Canadian people. Canadians are good. They are decent. They are hardworking. They do not have to give up on the things they used to take for granted. Affordable food, 
and, and homes just for the incompetence of ego and ego of one man. He is not worth the cost. He is not worth the crime. He is not worth the corruption. He is not worth giving up the country that we knew and still love. We as common sense conservatives are ready to restore hope in this country, but it starts with change. We rise today to vote non-confidence in this NDP liberal government and to restore the great country that we love based on the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Question. Order. Questions and comments. The Honourable uh, Government Deputy House Leader. I noticed that the Leader of the Opposition was bringing up headlines from the Globe and Mail, so I'd like to bring up another headline that was in today's Globe and Mail, and that is the Leader of the Opposition's campaign manager established a second lobbying firm working with the same office. The well, article goes on to say, clients who book meetings on this new company's website were redirected to the booking system of Jenny Burns and Associates. That function was removed, as was Ms. Burns' headshot from the website after the Globe inquiries about the connection of the two firms. I'm wondering, you know, now that we see that the leader of the opposition's campaign manager has trying to hide behind a second company in order to continue her lobbying practices, when will the leader of the opposition tell his campaign manager to stop lobbying and to start actually working for him? Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition. Everything the member said across the way is completely false, 100 percent false. And this from a government, by the way, who has presided over a 100 percent increase in lobbying activities. Why? Because lobbyists have come to know that you don't get, in business today, you don't get rich by having the best product, you get rich by having the best lobbyists. You don't get you don't get ahead by pleasing customers, but by pleasing politicians. This big government has left for poor people. What we want is precisely the opposite. We will slash the consultants and the lobbying sector, and we will unleash the productive forces of our working class people, our factories, our farms, our forestry, our fisheries, the people who do the real work in this country. And it starts by axing the tax, building the homes, fixing the budget, and stopping the crime. Questions and comments? The honourable member for Tim and James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We have another another event of I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, and then I'm going to go off and have a fundraiser and some mojitos at Storeway while the poor backbenchers dutifully follow through. So do you remember when he said that he was going to speak until the budget fell? And that was about three hours that he left. And remember when we had to vote all the way to Christmas? And the only time we ever saw him in the House was to vote against Ukraine. So we had nine confidence votes on Monday. He was hiding behind the screen. Tonight we will have votes. So here's the question. At Dairy Queen, I don't know what got him fired, but if you work for a living, you have to show up. So will he show up tonight or will he be off fundraising with his lobbyist friends and leaving his poor schleps on the back bench to do the heavy lifting of bringing down the government and forcing an election? Showing up... Showing up for work means showing up for the people you work for. And I have to say, I've been more in his riding in the last two years than he has. I've been on the ground in Timmins, and they, ha they say, in Timmins, they say he should be in the witness protection program. He doesn't live in his riding. He's never in his riding. He's forgotten about the miners and the forestry workers and the farmers. He's voted to raise their taxes, to raise tax on their home heating, so that the people in coal, northern Ontario, have to suffer in the cold and pay higher taxes, and now he's going to vote for his master, the Prime Minister of Canada, rather than the people in Timmins. I will fight for the people of Timmins, here, yes. everywhere, and always. The House Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition said that everything I said was not true. I'm wondering if he would step outside where he doesn't have parliamentary privilege. I'm sorry, this is a point of debate. Madam Speaker, I would like to understand how the Leader of the Opposition will manage to charm Quebecers through rhetoric that one can only be seen as uh, 
very negative against uh, Quebec's mayors. Will he have more positive things to say with regards to uh, Quebec mayors? Because otherwise he's going to have trouble in Quebec. Madam Speaker, I work for Canadians, not politicians. So when there are incompetent mayors from Toronto, from Vancouver, from Quebec, wherever they might come from, Montreal, wherever they may come from, if they are incompetent, I will say that they are incompetent. Incompetent politicians from the Bloc and the Liberals doubled the cost of housing. That's not good for Canadians. I'm working, we're working for those who can't pay their bills anymore. And if that might hurt someone's feelings, that's life. My priority is common sense.